You're listening to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, sponsored by Essentia Health. It only takes one step, twist, or crunch to know something doesn't feel right. Essentia Health's orthopedic and sports medicine team gets you back to doing what you love with commitment, resilience, intention. We're here to keep you moving forward. Visit EssentiaHealth.org to learn more about orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. Hello and welcome to the Bulldog Insider Podcast brought to you by Essentia Health. I'm Matt Wellens, the Bulldogs hockey beat writer at the News Tribune and the Rink Live. And I'm Zach Schneider, the television voice of UMD Hockey on My Nine Sports. With October winding down and November upon us, we want to get ahead on on what's uh, become a, a pretty cool month for, for the Bulldogs off the ice coming up here in November. Last year, the Bulldogs raised almost $12,000 for November by growing mustaches. Uh, some mustaches were much, much better than others. Movember highlights men's physical and mental health issues such as suicide prevention, prostate cancer, and testicular cancer. Cancer's had a big impact lately on the Bulldogs hockey program. We lost Tom Curvers, good friend uh, of the program, legend of the program in, in 2021 to lung cancer. Goaltender Zach Stasekel took on testicular cancer last fall during November. And our guest this week on the podcast has uh, recently rung the bell to celebrate his victory over leukemia. Welcome to the podcast, Bulldogs sophomore defenseman Will Francis. Thanks for having me. Will, what was that like th- uh, this this summer, that that moment, getting getting to ring the bell and the support that you got uh, just, just from the entire hockey community? Yeah, um, it was pretty special. I mean, it's pretty hard to put that into like emotional words, right? It was pretty emotional, um, just kind of inside me. And um, yeah, but it was super exciting. I'd say the biggest thing that I took from it was just uh, just excitement. Was there relief in there? at all i mean that's um, that was a long battle yeah that, that that you had almost two and a two two and a half years yeah two and a half years um you know i, I don't relief would be one that i guess you could use um i don't know if i was specifically used relieved like i was just more excited for the future and uh glad to you know just have my body back at full strength was the biggest thing that was uh just exciting for me what have the last six months then been like since you you ring the bell and you, maybe you get back to having that off your mind and get back to normal yeah. college life and college hockey life yeah definitely at first um it was just a little weird because i was taking pills uh basically for a year and a half straight every night um so now i've kind of just routined i've kept that routine and i'm just taking vitamin at night uh just because i feel like it was almost engraved in me right uh doing that for such a long time um, but yeah, I think, you know, the first, I just came up on three months, two weeks ago. So I, you know, it's just getting, you know, energy and strength back. You know, I think I've noticed honestly more in the last maybe month and a half than I did the first month and a half. Um, and that's just with getting, you know, my whole body kind of back to being a normal person again. So I think that's probably the biggest thing. Will, we had you on the podcast last December, uh, and talked, to. Uh about your, your battle with leukemia and stuff, but for people who maybe aren't as familiar with it, um, not longtime listeners of the podcast, can you kind of give us the, the cliff notes on, on when you were diagnosed and, and yeah. kind of um, the story till now? So I was diagnosed in uh, March of 2020, and for what I had specifically, it was called acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It's a two-and-a-half-year chemo regimen, um, kind of broken up into – I guess five different almost stages. So, you know, the first one is a month straight. Uh, I was taking something every day. I was in the hospital for a large majority of that. I was in pretty rough shape um, and then moved on to another cycle that lasted two months. I was able to get some strength back for that. Uh, and then I had another cycle that was another two months. Um, that was a bit easier as well. And then I kind of went into this next cycle. The fourth one was delayed intensification. That was pretty tough. That was uh, September and October of 2020. And then the last one started up in January, which I did a year and a half, which I played through last year, which was tough at times. But, um, you know, I'm glad to, you know, be completely done. So, yeah, I'd say that's pretty much the basis for so, it. So you were still undergoing chemotherapy for, for most of all last, last season. season. Yeah. All, for all of last season. Yeah. And was that all just, just pills? Did you have to go um, to? I had infusions once a month here at Essentia. Um, I also had quarterly spine taps that I have to go down to the cities for the, my main doctors down there. But yeah, other than that, it's just pills every night and once a month up here. So was that more, manageable. was that more mentally and emotionally 
taxing and challenging going through a, a college hockey season or was it more physical? Uh, I think honestly it was physical. Like I knew I wasn't myself. Um, you know, I could do work on my conditioning as much as I could. And I knew that just scientifically I was never going to be the same as the guy next to me. Right. I was at a between 20 and 30% red blood cell disadvantage and in, in a sport like hockey, that's pretty significant, right? Just from a conditioning standpoint of how much oxygen you can get into your body. Um, but you know, it's kind of something that I guess I specifically tried to not think about, you know, I, I tried to not let it bother me. I know at the beginning of the year, you know, I was telling Sandy when I'd go in for treatment, I'd have to miss practice. And, uh, probably I'd say after Christmas, once the new year hit, I would go in for treatment after practice one day and just wouldn't tell them and then try to come out the next day. And I was able to, so I knew I was getting stronger, but yeah, at first, you know, it's something that, you know, the, we all did have concerns too, right? You know, it's something different, something that they haven't had before, something that I didn't know what exactly my limitations could be in a sense. But yeah, I think I just learned, you know, with time and going through it that uh, what I was able to do and what I wasn't able to do. And practice is one thing for you to come out after a treatment or an infusion or anything like that and try to practice, right? And maybe not yeah. feel yourself. But you played in some games last year uh, while yeah. going through all this. And, and so we obviously don't want to compare it to being injured or to put, be playing banged up like like a lot of guys do throughout the season. But how did that feel where well, your first college hockey games are maybe in this space where you're not as confident in your conditioning, your yeah. your strength, your abilities as as maybe you would be without this going on? And, uh, yeah, it was challenging at times. But I think initially, like, I was so full of just excitement and be, being able to play in that first game that it was almost kind of non-existent to me. For sure right away, but I think, you know, as the game goes on, uh, every player gets tired, right? I think maybe initially uh, that Thanksgiving weekend against Alaska near the end of one of the two games, I was pretty tired. And when I came and saw my parents there telling me how red my face was last year and then compared to this year, they just don't see it uh, at all, which is which is really good. Um, so, yeah, I think I was just full of excitement. almost didn't let it bother me. Is that just that hockey player mentality that <laughs> you're going through chemo, but yeah. I'm still going to get out there and play uh, – I'm not going to always give coach that heads up that yeah. uh, that that I'm that I'm injured. Uh, I always joke with him. You guys would could be missing a limb, and I'd ask you if you can play that week, and you'd be like, "Yeah, I'm good." Was that just the hockey men player mentality, or is it something else that that made you want to just get out there and, and and battle through all that, not not prolong yeah. your your comeback? You know, for sure, a mix of both, right? I think anybody specifically hockey you know guys um they try to go through injuries or something like that and i think there's a big difference between you know being hurt and being injured right you know injured is where it's you know something maybe a broken bone like it's gonna be tough to play through something like that but yeah i think you know maybe it's just more of my mindset myself almost maybe in a sense of out to you know just trying to prove it to myself maybe more than others but yeah i think you know that's maybe just the way i'm wired maybe i'm wired a little differently than others but that's a good thing too so yeah i think you know probably just a mix of both what was the prognosis your doctors gave you like when in those early state early days when you you first were diagnosed had did you even had were you talking back then about about hockey or anything like that whether you were going to get back out there i mean i broke my leg when i was 14 and i played soccer and i was not a high level player but like that's my first question of when when do i get to go back out yeah. there, there and the doc looks at me and kind of laughs like you're not playing soccer anytime soon yeah after your leg yeah i think uh that was probably one of the first things i asked for sure you know i had uh that basically i think is the head doctor down there at the u where i was treated for the most part um the first thing he said to me is that you will be cured and then i think the next thing i asked is when i can when can i get back to hockey um and i think initially they were kind of saying more like two and a half years is about what it's going to be. And at that point, you know, I, was, I had just got out of knee surgery. Um, I had a good year, a solid year of junior the year before and was kind of just on a, a good uh, projection path. So, you know, at first it was a little, I don't know, it was devastating thinking of maybe missing almost three years of hockey. But, yeah, I think that it was initially something that I for sure or I know I asked right away one of the first things and – they, you know, allowed me to, you know, as good as I felt, I was able to skate when I was diagnosed in March. I skated for the first time after that in June. And so, you know, I was able to at least just get out and feel the ice pretty quick after the diagnosis. How old were you when you were diagnosed? 19. 19. So yeah. two and a half years feels like an eternity for, for a 19 yeah. year old, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a long time. I mean, yeah, it's hard to describe. Like, I think the best way that I can put it is Sometimes it feels like it was an eternity ago, and then at other times, depending on what it was, it feels like it was at a snap of a finger. Um, so, you know, I kind of see both sides of it, just uh, depending on what it is. Did you defer your recruitment to UMD? Is it one year? 
Yeah. Two years. Yeah, it was one Just year. one year? Yeah. So how did those conversations go? First, you have the conversations with your doctor and your family and kind of figure out where, where yeah. it is. And now you talk to not only UMD, but I'm sure you talk to the people at Anaheim about what this means for the future and, yeah. and maybe things are going to be a little bit delayed. But how was that process? Oh, uh, super good. I know... You know, I heard from it's when uh, I heard from Sandy. I heard from Jason Herter, who was still here when it, I was diagnosed, and then uh, also Krause. And I remember specifically Krause calling me, and he might have been the first one. And the first things he said is that you will be a bulldog. So you know that was obviously nice and comforting to hear. Um, and then I also knew that you know I also had to earn it and kind of get back to that point that I was. Um, but yeah, it, you know from the Bulldogs to the, uh, Anaheim, everyone was just super supportive. Anything I needed, um, you know, I was able to get um, within reason. And yeah, you know, across the whole hockey world, I received a ton of support, which obviously helped. So it was all pretty good stuff. You were at the Ducks development camp this summer. Was that the first time you'd been back there since the first time since you were drafted in yeah. 2019? Yeah, they didn't have development camps the years prior because uh, 2020 was COVID and then 2021 with the season going late, it just didn't work out. For you, what what did it mean to to be back there at, at the development camp? And there was that cool video they posted of uh, yeah. the coach highlighting uh, what you went through and everything. Yeah, you know, that was unexpected, um, but that was for sure, you know, pretty special. Something I won't ever forget, right? You know, head coach to do that at a development camp to a prospect pretty special. But yeah, you know, I was at a full bill of health. Um, I felt great. You know, I felt like my mindset going in there was, you know, I'm not just going to be here to be here. You know, I wanted to get something out of it too. And, you know, I thought I just, I thought I did that that week. So yeah, I felt like, you know, I was there, you know, to get better, to learn um, and just to compete. So it was really fun and it uh, doesn't get much better than going out to sunny California being from Minnesota. So it's always good to get out there. Yeah, it's too bad that development camp's not like over Christmas or something <laughs> like that for, yeah, for the yeah. Ducks. So you know, you're, you're a couple months removed now from ringing the bell, and I, I'm sure mentally it'll take even a little bit longer to kind of get used to maybe being back to so-called normal life. Um, but right now, when you came back last year, it was Will Francis who's battling cancer, right? And yep. then when you started this season, it was Will Francis who just beat cancer, right? At what point do you want people to just move on? Do you ever want them to move on and, and not forget, but stop talking about that portion of it and just kind of view it as Will Francis, the the sophomore defenseman and yeah. hopefully Anaheim Ducks player later on? Yeah. You know, I think uh, it's probably something that will always kind of be there, right? Uh, but I think, you know, as time goes on, um, it'll probably be talked about less and less. You know, it's something that, you know, I kind of want to – help out with in a way where this last in September I had a little t-shirt drop with sauce hockey where we donated all of um, the profits to the leukemia and lymphoma society of America so you know it's stuff like that though that you know I think will keep the like remembrance of it right you know but it's also st uh, something where you know I can help the cause and I think that's what is probably more important to me is you know helping the cause and helping others, you know, achieve their dreams like I'm able to. So with November here, I mean, last year was a pretty obvious uh, maybe face of that movement yeah. uh, with Zach going through what he was and, and you were still not declared cancer free at that point. So you two were kind of the obvious faces to put on it. But now that you're both on the other side of this thing, are you still comfortable with this being, you know, driven through the UMD community, knowing that they've got these two stories here that are are, are pretty remarkable comeback stories when you think about it to getting back to the level that you two are at. Yeah. I mean, it's cool stuff, right? It's inspirational. And yeah, I think, you know, recognizing both of us is just, I don't, I don't see any negative side to it. Right. So yeah, I know like we're going to set something up here this month um, with Zach, you know, regarding what he had and kind of doing the same thing that I did in September where September was leukemia and lymphoma awareness where November is testicular awareness. Um, so kind of me doing something similar to what I did and donate some money and raise some money, you know, within the community and hopefully, you know, around the world. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more with Will Francis. You're listening to the Bulldog Insider Podcast brought to you by Essentia Health. Hey there, my name is Wyatt Buckner and I'm the host of the Duluth News Tribune Minute Podcast. Hear the most important news of the day, including weather and sports from Duluth, Minnesota and from around the Northland. Join me and my fellow reporters as we take you through the local news you need to start your day. Episodes are released Monday through Friday and are available on Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for supporting local journalism. Hi, I'm Maria Lockwood, a reporter with the Superior Telegram. Explore Superior and Douglas County history with me on Archive Dive 
a monthly podcast available at superiortelegram.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome back to the Bulldog Insider Podcast brought to you by Essentia Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. They're proud to be the team physicians for the UMD Bulldogs and provide sports medicine care to more than 25,000 student athletes in the community to ensure they can compete at the highest level while protecting their long-term health and athletic futures. Thanks to Essentia Health for their support of the Bulldog Insider Podcast. I'm Matt Wellens, back here with my co-host Zach Schneider and our guest Will Francis. Will, you mentioned that the t-shirts that uh, that you had in, in September uh, was built Bulldog Tough. Tell us how that that came about. Cool shirts, sauce hockey. Uh, you did that partnership with. How did that all come about? Yep. So he initially, uh, you know, sent me a message or something like that. I think he reposted that video actually of Dallas Seekins, uh recognizing me at that uh, development camp, um, and I think I, you know, I shot him a thank you and something like that, and kind of just stirred up conversation. Said, if you ever want to start something up like that, you know, we'd be glad to help. Um, and so, you know, when the opportunity arose, I thought September would be, you know, a good time um, between both um, leukemia and lymphoma awareness and then as well as childhood cancer awareness. So kind of just arose. And I think, you know, I was spending some time definitely between me and him having a conversation, me having conversations with my friends, uh, teammates, and I thought, you know, that's probably one of the best slogans that we could have came up with for a t-shirt like that. What's it mean to, we mentioned, Zach kind of brought up, you're, you're on the other side of this now, but both you and Zach are on the other side of the, this battle with cancer. You're now kind of on that advocate side. Have you been approached by, by other, other, whether it's hockey players or anyone else also going through this? And, and what's it like if people see you as an inspiration? Yeah. And this is two and a half years. You go from cancer to you're back out there playing D1 college hockey and yeah. back on track to the NHL. What's that like to be that that person people look up to, though? Yeah, I mean, it's it's good, right? There's a kid from Cloquet named Blake Conklin who skates with uh, Bronwyn, who's also our uh, skating coach. And then through us, too, we got connected. And he was kind of nervous at first, you know, getting back to hockey. He's, he's only eight years old, uh, so a lot younger, right? You know, he, he, I don't think, you know, when you're eight years old, you're thinking, you know, I'm never, might, might not ever be able to get it back into this. But, you know, the way we can all see it, right? You know, you got a whole life ahead of you. So uh, I was able to go skate with him um, this summer once and just talk to him and his family and I think you know just off of that like knowing that we had the same thing and I'm able to play division one hockey it's just given him a lot of you know inspiration and I think more just in his mind you know he can accomplish you know whatever he wants. How much did it help you and not that you were wishing that Zach Stayskull ended up in that situation um, because he came into it after you were kind of a year and a half into it. But how much did it help to to have each other throughout last season, um, not going through the exact same thing, but similar paths uh, and similar challenges mentally, physically, emotionally? Yeah, I think... you know, having someone else by your side that's going through something similar to that, it can only help you. Now we live together, so maybe we see each other too much. But, uh, you know, it, it was good. You know, something we can relate to. But, yeah, I think, you know, the first thing that I said to him is, you know, anything you need, you know, I'm here for you. You know, I've been through this for a while now. I know kind of, you know, the challenges and whatnot that's going to entail. But, uh, yeah, I think, you know, we just helped each other out however we needed to just, um, yeah, support each other. I don't want to discount any – outside help he got whether it's from his family his friends the coaching staff the other guys on the team but you know to have you as someone who's been through exactly the the yeah. maybe more so the mindset of what he's gone through or maybe it's similar you know physically as well but I mean it just seems like others can empathize with it but you yeah. had that that firsthand experience and it seems like that would be a pretty good sounding board for some of the things that he was going through yeah you know I think like you said people from the outside of it can, you know, give all the support prayers and all that's awesome and great. And you need that. But having someone that can relate directly to it, I think just helps that much more. Um, and I think it helps, you know, just your mind that much more with someone that's been through it, just talking to them and, you know, knowing that there's going to be challenges, but knowing that there's going to be good times and getting on the other side of it. So was it therapeutic for you at all to, to kind of recount your own experiences of the last year and a half and, and see it through maybe a different lens, a helping lens? Um, yeah, maybe. I guess I haven't honestly really looked at it like that much, but you know, I think, yeah, definitely it, it helped, you know, me just whatever it was to me and says he had a couple similar drugs that we had to take and uh, we were just kind of like, t- maybe it was just complaining about them, but uh, <laughs> even then it was, yeah, it was probably good for both of us. I mean, it's a different perspective. You know, you, you have all that family support, but 
Like mom and dad aren't thinking about your hockey career. Yeah. They're thinking about you just being healthy and everything like that. You could probably relate to Zach and, and Zach could relate to you that, yeah, you guys want to get healthy and be cancer free, but getting back on the ice and playing hockey again is, is a top priority. I mean, I remember when Zach, you know, made that announcement, he had it there. I believe it was in all caps that he was going to play hockey that, that season. Yeah. For Zach, that had to be a huge help having you around that that you could you know the two of you could could confide that in each other right yeah I think so and you know going back to our parents and then us the different ways I think at least for me and mine uh it was definitely harder on my parents than it was for me um and I think Zach should probably say the same as well but yeah I think you know what helped me and like he said in his little letter is just that vision right of getting back out there um that's probably always something that for me like I was looking at you know I, I, there's times where I'd be by myself um, skating while I was going through treatment just because there was all those whether it was COVID restrictions and just trying to you know stay safe no one knew how it would react you know some of the, with a depleted immune system like I had at the time but yeah it's just kind of going back to that vision um, that you have for yourself you know and I think you know that that always helps so that's probably what I did. So you guys are, are planning another November campaign for this year, a- anything yeah. anything special, or just trying to carry on that that Ben Pat legacy that he's kind of yeah that he kind of started all 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 those years. Yeah, we might have to you know call him in and have him maybe organize it again for us. But uh, yeah, I think you know we'll just have to a lot of younger new faces, so we're gonna have to see who can grow mustaches. Um, I know I'm not gonna be at the leader top of the leaderboard, um, but yeah, I think you know it'll be good again. Kind of have the same thing as last year, you know, set up some sort of donation and then um give it all to men's health so is there a leaderboard for sure what last the year there was, yeah for sure there was a few guys last year who had really nice ones uh ben pat included uh matt anderson i guess had a nice one too We're kind of trying to think of who we had luke lohite could probably grow something nice um, i was gonna say who, who are that if, if yeah if we had if a couple sport, front if, sports runners, bet, if sports betting were uh legal in minnesota and yeah <laughs> not frowned on well sports betting for charity that would be the way to do this if yeah, you could like put money on on which guy uh, you think's gonna gonna win it i mean isaac howard he's what 18 but he pretty scrappy though he's, it's, it's, not, a, it's a yeah, scrappy it's, a scra- it's pretty scrappy facial hair uh you know i think it'll come around i'm almost though. 38 and i yeah. have scrappy facial yeah. hair, so <laughs> i'm sure isaac will come around i remember that 17 18 team when they did november there were some struggles on yeah. on that squad with with some young guys riley tufty tried real hard but better hockey player than mustache grower uh that year so who 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 are the top guys low height um, definitely up yeah there. for sure low height's a front runner really trying to think here stezzy honestly has you know a little one right now jesse jocks is up there older guy what well, old, older guy who won't be there is probably tanner Ladderud. i don't think i've ever seen him with anything on his face luke Milmock will probably have something good uh, but you know if i had to pick one for sure it, it's probably luke low height uh you know right out of the gates so I think he, he'll he'll have something good. Do you, do you guys require everyone to to shave off the facial hair right away on November? Or are you letting or are people allowed to get a head start? I think guys will for sure have a head start. Um, I know that I'll need one if I want to compete with anybody. But uh, yeah, I think just you know overall the idea of it's great, and um, you know hopefully we can try to break break that uh, twelve thousand dollar fund that we got last year. I want to take a minute and step back and talk about Ben Pat, who's who's not here anymore, but. When he's we not dead. About, ben yeah, Pat's right. not dead. Yeah, he's, he's not. He's still with us. He's, he's actually not, in, he's in he's Duluth. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, maybe he'll come back, but he's not with the program anymore, yeah. and so he's not, uh, you know, in the locker room with you guys. But when we talk about the the UMB program, so often we talk about how many good hockey players have come through here, but also really good people. Yeah. And, and Ben Pat is the probably best. one of those guys yeah. that's uh, uh, probably a much better person than he ever was. Uh, you know, contributed to the hockey, which I think is his legacy, right? right. That he was a, a yeah. great teammate and and great with this November, but talk about him and his support because he's one of those guys that when we talk about people that haven't gone through what you've gone through, that I feel like really stepped up to the, and answered the bell last year to support you and Zach in a really big way. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, he's just, you know, probably the, from last year, the best guy there, you know, no disrespect to, you know, his hockey abilities and whatnot, but he was there for five years and only started two or three games. Um, and you know, just the type of guy he was, you know, he came in every day with a smile, just w- was simply just the best guy. And yeah, it was huge for, for me and Zach as well. So, you know, it's too bad that he's not around anymore, but, you know, happy to still have him in Duluth. And hopefully, I, I have at least this year ran into him a couple of times already. So, you know, it's always good to see him. If there was a hype man Hall of Fame at UMD, he would probably be a, a yeah. first ballot. Yeah, him and him and Hoagie would both be in there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he 
you know, was just a super guy, right? You know, he came every day, didn't complain once about that he wasn't playing, brought it all to the ice and was just you know, a great guy to have in the locker room. Um, you know, kind of just was a guy that could read the room well. Like if we needed to mellow it out, he'd mellow it out, crack jokes, that sort of thing. And, you know, at times where, you know, maybe we need um, just a little spark, you know, he, he brought that. So I will he, was, be, he was good at that. I will be forever bummed. And I'm, I'm, I'm not the only one that they couldn't get him a win out at Northern yeah. when he was able to play it in those couple games because that was a really cool thing to, to yeah. see him finally get – get some action yeah for sure oh i thought you would say bummed that we couldn't get him back for a sixth season yeah. well that too i was i was campaigning for that pushing him on, you're right on though he's still for... in duluth so we could have him on the podcast even though we could, have could him be on the an podcast. honorary member oh, i thought you're gonna say he's still in duluth he could like still maybe come back to, to school like yeah. rejoin the team at the semester <laughs> He could. Five, five and a half seasons in. Yeah, I don't know. Is yeah. he? I don't know if he finished his fully finished his NBA. I think he did, but there we maybe go. He needs a what class. a story maybe would a that be? Yeah. He's a little struggle to start the year uh, for the for the guys yeah. in the first couple series. Ben Pat comes back at semester and carries them to a, another national championship. Yeah. That would solidify his legacy. That would solidify him for sure. <laughs> he'd, he'd have a banner. What yeah. a story. Yeah. Ben Pat, if you're listening, if the opportunity is there, <laughs> for sure. We're gonna get we're gonna get uh, compliance on the podcast here. How do we uh, get Ben Pat for uh, five and a half seasons? Slash, can Naomi Rogi get a seventh season of, of hockey as well? Or just sports in general? Will, to kind of wrap this up, looking back on, on your battle with leukemia and everything, how has it changed your perspective on, on life and as well as hockey? Yeah, I think um, just pretty simply, you know, not taking anything for granted. You know, as cliche as it might sound, I think, you know, being in my shoes and Zach's and anyone else that has had something like that, it uh, really kind of means something more but yeah you know I think you know you can achieve whatever you want through just being consistent and uh, putting your head down and getting to work so you know those are things that you know I think of every day is just coming to the rink every day with some sort of purpose you know I want to leave there better than I came Um, and then off the ice too just in school and you know whether it's something with my family like just hanging out at home that sort of thing is being with them and not taking anything for granted kind of soaking it all in. All right, we'll leave it there. Will, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast this week. We appreciate you coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. The Bulldog Insider Podcast, you can find on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe and rate us. For more Bulldogs hockey coverage, visit therinklive.com and DuluthNewsTribune.com. Zach, a lot of hockey at Amsoil Arena this weekend with the women hosting Wisconsin and the men hosting uh, Cornell. What's the TV schedule look like? Yeah, a lot of hockey and a lot of TV. We got all four games uh, this weekend, so it'll be fun. Uh, 3 o'clock, 7 o'clock, both Friday and Saturday, the women hosting Wisconsin, the men hosting Cornell. So um, I'll be there all weekend long uh, with the teams, and this is one of a few doubleheaders that we've got um, on the schedule this year for my nine. So I'm I'm excited for it and looking forward to uh, Friday, Saturday. Voice going to be able to make it through four games? Yeah, it should. Hopefully, uh, well, hopefully not. Hopefully there's a lot of goals for the home teams and uh, the voice is pretty rough by Saturday night. But my producer always has a couple cold beverages uh, for Saturday night when we're done. So I'll be looking forward to those as well. Uh, May there not be long breaks between TV timeouts this weekend. That's right. right, Yeah. But we always like end to end action. We had a few little rushes uh, with the Wisconsin series this past weekend. And so, um, no, as long as uh, the the home team wins, uh, We'll do whatever we need to do on the on the TV side. And if all games could end in regulation, uh, <laughs> I would appreciate that as as well. So, uh, big thanks to our sponsor, Essentia Health, for their continued support of the Bulldog Insider Podcast. Uh, and thanks to all of you for listening. We will catch you next week.